Andre the Giant was hosting this tonight. I'm a little shorter and fatter. And this is Snapple. <laughs> I would have been here a little earlier, but I had to have a catheter installed. This could be a long show. <laughs> so that uncouth remark, ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue the program. <laughs> Good evening and thank you for coming. Hey, uh, now before we get real deep into this uh, process, understand for those of you that are, are new that even though I look angry, I'm actually smiling right now. Here's my good smile. <laughs> Here is my pissed off look. <laughs> and that is a result of uh, three rounds of Bell's palsy, facial paralysis. I don't let it define me. You should know about it because why doesn't that bastard ever smile? <laughs> Welcome to the uh, festive conga room. I didn't write it. As well as those of you watching uh, on the official, as if there is an unofficial channel on Twitch TV. And has anybody here ever heard of Twitch TV? Thank you very much, thank you, thank you. I am surprised. But welcome Twitch TV viewers wherever you may be. Uh, we are here tonight, obviously, to celebrate the uh, upcoming video game, WWE uh, 2K14. It is the WWE's first foray at, with a, our new partner, 2K Sports, who we, we believe to be the, the innovator and the leading manufacturer uh, and creator of video games in the business. Uh, WWE had the opportunity to do, get in business with a lot of people. A lot of people wanted WWE's business. I think the upper management made a great decision in collaborating with, with 2K Sports. And so we are here tonight to talk about the next video game that we are, our first video game, which we hope will be many successful ones with uh, this company. Uh, today, earlier today, uh, after I was able to pride Sherry Lawler, who's 63 away from his 23-year-old girlfriend, uh, we, announced the WrestleMania mode of the uh, roster of the 2K Sports uh, WWE game, which, by the way, will be out at the end of October, October 30th, in domestically North America, I must say, and uh, November 1 internationally, when the game will be available. So we announced the roster today for the WrestleMania mode of that video game, and uh, more Roster information is still to come, obviously, but we're, we were both talking before the show. It's very impressive, the list of talent that uh, 2K has endeavored to negotiate with to get their deals done, to get them on this video game. And after being a former executive vice president of talent relations, I can assure you that dealing with some of these, uh, oh, maybe a little egocentric individuals, was challenging. But the end result, without a doubt, is the greatest roster that we've ever been associated with on any level for, our, for this video game. Now, I have worked on this uh, for months. It was the best writing because it sounded real. It sounded authentic. And on this uh, WrestleMania mode, we kind of threw the band back together. I'm a big Eagles fan. And without sounding egocentric, which I am, obviously, uh, I felt like Don Henley re, re, uh, re, reuniting with Glenn Fry, and the Eagles got back together. So the King and I kind of got back together and did all the commentary for all of our, from 1 to 29, WrestleManias, and uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. And we did it without drugs. <laughs> Pretty much. <clears throat> so, uh, the, the great thing about this game, as I have seen it, and I'm a little cynical being an old guy, old grouchy guy, is that everything is very authentic. If by chance the Hogan-Andre match from WrestleMania 3 
makes the final cut, wink, wink, then you will see that the Silver Dome has been exactly replicated on this video game. Every minute detail from turnbuckles to the ropes uh, to the t attire. If it was before the HD era, then it will, you'll see that it was pre-HD. There's a difference of the, of the, of the, of the uh, video quality. Not that the video quality is bad, it's just not HD. It looks like it's exactly in that period of time. The graphics are on the money. Before every match, there is a video package, a highlight package, that tells you how we got to where we are now, and now we are about to see this match. It's just so authentic and so real in that respect. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. So uh, we, we're going to try to ascertain here tonight with our esteemed panel why these matches at WrestleMania were so epic. The, the, you may be confused with my uh, beginning here. The entire roster has yet to be revealed. What we did today and what we're addressing here tonight are, is the WrestleMania mode. And, of course, WrestleMania 30, historic for us, will be in New Orleans at the Superdome in April of 2014. was kind of the motivating factor or the creative factor of getting us from here to there uh, on, uh, in April. I hear the Swamp people have been invited along with the Duck Dynasty people. They're just my kind of folks. I might even get booked on that event, but uh, let's not hold our breath. Uh, so we're going to get into that a lot more here tonight, but I want to welcome our uh, panel. We got a really cool panel. It's a very eclectic panel. Most are actually sober, <laughs> but not all. Uh, I'd like to welcome, first of all, this is your music cue for you listening backstage because I've gone longer than I was supposed to. Uh, He's one of the hottest young stars in, in WWE. I have a great deal of respect for him uh, as an athlete. We recruited him out of Kent State. We believe that he's going to be a huge star. He reminds me of several different individuals, but at times he gives me a flashback, which is not those mushrooms I had in the 70s, but wrestling flashbacks of Shawn Michaels. He is a former two-time world heavyweight champion, Mr. Money in the Bank, and he'll be competing tomorrow night at SummerSlam. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Dolph Ziggler. I'm here to show the world. I'm here to show the world. Everybody. Dolph is not wearing any underwear. I don't know how I got that, but I think it was on Twitter. At heel Dolph Ziggler, but I'm not sure. I told you that in confidence, JR. Sorry. I'm old. <laughs> you know, when you get AARP age, you could use all the age for your indiscretions. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was incontinent. <laughs> the next panelist is another... Bright young star. What a segue, huh? <laughs> and uh, he is uh, a guy that you could probably bring here, out here with a one word explanation, three word, three letter word. That'll all come organically, trust me. Uh, I really believe that this is an amazing story of a very gifted athlete whose GPS is really screwed up to get here because it took him a long time in a lot of small venues for very little money and in 24 hours, and this is no BS, uh, he has the greatest opportunity of his lifetime. In all seriousness, everything that this man has tried to prepare for comes to the culmination uh, tomorrow in the main event at SummerSlam. 
So with that said, and of course, no one do pressure, here is Daniel Bryan. <laughs> Anybody watch the show on A&E called Mountain Men? <laughs> Daniel is maybe the next major star of Mountain Men, which will be hard to do considering he lives now in Phoenix. And if those of you that watch Total Divas on E! on Sunday night know that. I'm very proud of Daniel. I'm proud of the guys like these two guys right here that uh, defy the odds because you can see them sitting there. They're not what some narrow-minded individuals believe to be the stereotypical stars. They have talent, they have passion, and even though they're not 6'2", who gives a damn? Okay, now I'm done. Uh, the uh, next guest is uh, a fellow that we haven't seen in a while. He's held more titles than I care to mention. Not that I know them all, but there are a lot of them, trust me. Uh, he was instrumental in popular, populating the, uh, popularizing, Bell's palsy moment, the Lucha Libre style of uh, wrestling north of the border. I'm just reading this stuff here. That's what it says, north of the, what border? <laughs> Canada, Toronto? Abu Dhabi, not too far from his hometown, ladies and gentlemen. He lives in San Diego. He started. He had his first pro match at age 15 before he got his driver's license. The incomparable Ray Mysterio. Little sidebar here, Ray let me borrow his mask last night. My wife was frightened. Did you use it in the proper way? I did. I was, but we had that full length mirror in our room and it was scary. <laughs> Hell, it scared me, Ray, I'm telling you. And I've seen it all. Including this next gentleman we're about to announce. <laughs> you know, this next guy is famous. There's no doubt about it. Somebody would, some people may say he's infamous. Uh, certainly the driving force behind, creatively, between, behind ECW. He is the creative rabbi of WWE 13, and certainly one of the most creative minds I've ever been around in my career, even though he can be a giant pain in the ass. He has been instrumental in the careers of many men, including currently Brock Lesnar and Curtis Axel. And he'll be in the Beast Corner tomorrow night at SummerSlam when uh, Brock Lesnar takes on Paul Heyman's former best friend, CM Punk. I started working broadcasting with Paul Heyman uh, when he had hair. <laughs> and we were quite the team. The, the, Jewish fellow from Scarsdale and the redneck hillbilly from Oklahoma made quite the contrast. But it was some of my greatest work, thanks to him, bringing the best out in me. So I would like to welcome you to our stage, the Meyer Lansky of WWE, arguably the greatest manager that's ever walked the face of the earth, Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Happy Heyman, the jovial Jew. Sir? 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 Oh, here it comes. 
Here goes. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ma'am. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> you got to love it, right? We had a lot of fun broadcasting together. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll do it again somewhere. Who knows? Somebody listening out there? <laughs> Any agents in the house? Okay. Jeez, uh, I would never say that. Our next guest is a multiple-time New York Times best-selling number one author. And that's pretty cool. Uh, he's, he's an amazing human being. He'll be performing uh, his uh, stand-up tomorrow night. And if I hadn't had my Snapple, I would remember where. It's somewhere here in L.A. Where is it? Oh, thanks, Dolph. You're young. Improv. <laughs> Improv, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't even know what tickets are. tickets still available? Of course. Well, they are. Of course they are. They always are. Just go down and stand around, and, you know, if you don't get in, we'll blame Dolph. <laughs> uh, great matches. One of my greatest feelings as an executive, and I use that term loosely, in hiring talent and bringing talent aboard WWE ship and providing them with an opportunity for them to be great was this man. No matter if he was Mankind or Cactus Jack or Dude Love or Mrs. Foley's baby boy, Mick Foley always delivered. He was one of the classic overachievers in the history of our business. And if I get one more tweet at JR's BBQ, to keep the score, about Good God Almighty, they killed him. <laughs> I'm going to sew the sheets. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our friend, great family man. His kids are here, most of them anyway. Mick Foley. The uh, Paul and Mick have the same uh, fashion consultant. We got a two for one special with my coupon. Coupon, <laughs> men's warehouse, ladies and gentlemen. That that dude is good. Our next guest. Who in the hell would say this? <laughs> Our next guest needs no introduction. Would I ever say that in my? Okay, but I'll be damned if I won't give it to him anyway. Hey, take my wife, please. Uh, this man is a WWE Hall of... I don't need anything written about this guy. I don't need anything written about this man, or any of these men, for that matter. I have great respect for everyone sitting here, all for various reasons, and some will be money. Uh, this next guest is arguably the greatest in-ring performer that ever lived. Okay, it killed my gimmick there. The, stop the woo shit. <laughs> He's a 16-time world champion. That doesn't happen by accident. I said one time that everybody, a lot of the wrestlers were using crayons and he was Rembrandt using watercolors and painting portraits because I believe that he has a career spanned four decades amazingly he's just absolutely a, a treasure and uh, no matter what happens and what comes this way he's always going to be my friend and, I, and some of my greatest work I've always said that wrestling announcers like Happy Heyman and I, when we did WrestleMania 17 that was critically acclaimed, the wrestlers made the music. All we did was sit there and try to provide an appropriate lyric. It was amazing for me to be able to experience the music made by our next guest, the two-time WWE Hall of Famer, Nature Boy, Ric Flair. <laughs>
I kind of feel like Lindsey Nelson in introducing Mickey Mantle. And, some, and if you don't know who that is, Google it. <laughs> finally, ladies and gentlemen, my God, finally. Great keyword here in the script. Great friend. Uh, feels like family. Not to say that he wouldn't stomp a mud hole in my ass and walk it dry, because he did. Shut the front door. God almighty, are you mad at me? Oklahoma City, two days after WrestleMania 17, he beat the holy hell out of me in front of my family. But it's TV, JR. Let it roll. Without a doubt, he was the star of the Attitude Era. The Attitude Era was the difference maker in corporate structure, WWE, in my opinion, creatively, because it allowed us to win the Monday Night Wars. It put the uh, competition to rest, and uh, we were able to successfully fend off the monies of the Turner Empire, and the rest is history. And it happened because of a lot of people, but no one more than uh, the man I'm about to introduce. Uh, he is, uh, he introduced me in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2007. And when I got to thinking about this, well, we're going to introduce, we're going to induct you in the King, JR, in the Hall of Fame in 2007. I thought, well, that's a good way to get me out of the company. And it's also nice, but who do I, uh, who do you, who do you want to introduce you? Well, it was easy. It was very easy. The greatest star who sold more tickets more pay-per-views, more video games, more t-shirts, more caps. And now he's the king of podcast. Hey, this is an adventure. If you guys haven't listened to this podcast, I'm telling you, you should listen to it. It is absolutely classic. Unfiltered, unedited, unrehearsed, unscripted, Stone Cold's podcast is amazing. So I'd like to introduce a man that has many names. He is known as the Bionic Redneck. He is known as the Texas Rattlesnake. I know him as my friend, even though he's a Texan, and I'm an Oklahoman, see? <laughs> Please welcome the Hall of Famer, Stone Cold Steve Austin. celebrate my uh, milestone here today. JR I, called me today and said, hey, wear your pink shirt. I said, exactly, okay. Exactly, brother. That's how we work. That's how we roll. All right, gentlemen, thank you and welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us here. Uh, all of you, except for my friend, Mr. Heyman, are playable superstars in the WWE 2K14 uh, game. And uh, Many of you are part of the much ballyhooed. Don't you really love the word ballyhooed, Paul? Isn't ballyhooed a cool word? It, it is as of this moment, sir. Yes, Thank sir. Thank you very is. much. Ballyhooed. Uh, it's not spelled right on my script, but ballyhooed is what it is. 30 years, the ballyhooed, 30 years of WrestleMania mode. You know, it's a damnest thing. Uh, it collects more than 45 of the greatest matches from the greatest show in history, WrestleMania. I can tell you that. My goal, when I got to WWE 20 years ago this year, I had been in the business 90, uh, 19 years. But my goal was always to make it to WWE and to be a part of that one event called WrestleMania. And I think if you talk to NFL players, for example, what is your goal? To make the team, to make a couple of bucks, to you know, pay child support for baby mama, or is it to play in a Super Bowl? Well, you know, hell, it's to play in a Super Bowl. WrestleMania is Super Bowl. It's bigger than the Super Bowl because we're in 160 countries. 
in 30 languages. And Roger Goodell hasn't figured that out yet, how to get his league into that many territories. So let's kind of get into this thing of the talent that are here. Everybody knows that WrestleMania is the greatest spectacle in entertainment. I kind of just described that. But here's a question, fellas, listen to. What does, what is the special importance that WrestleMania holds for you? So the question is, for WrestleMania itself, individually, personally, and you haven't asked this question, these questions have been hermetically sealed in the old mayonnaise jar. God bless Johnny Carson. Daniel Bryant, we're gonna start with you. Uh, and, and, and try not to go a three-letter word, but what does WrestleMania mean to you? Uh, the most embarrassing moment of my career actually happened at WrestleMania. It was, uh, but it was also a turning point in my career. And so uh, the fans at WrestleMania are awesome. And it's one of those things to walk out in front of 70 or 80,000 people just sends chills down your spine. And uh, it's an incredible thing to be a part of. And I can't imagine being uh, a part of it at the levels of some of the other guys on stage. But um, it's a dream. And that's what all of us aspire to is the main event WrestleMania. Mick Foley, your turn. What does WrestleMania personally mean to you? Well, I, I first want to say about Daniel, I wonder, had it not been for that huge disappointment and the, the just the... The gathering of the fans, like the, the the emotion of the fans and the voice of the fans, the, the next day, that really, I, my kids went to the show the next day in the Miami Arena, and they said it was it was like un, un, unlike anything they'd ever seen. The Daniel Bryan chance that people were so disappointed that Daniel hadn't gotten his break that in a weird sense it kind of became a strange, in a strange way, his WrestleMania moment. And we all know we need that. And. Uh, I went out in uh, 2004 and I had a chance to do uh, WrestleMania, my first match uh, back in four years where I teamed up with The Rock. And I, I told this story of the Hall of Fame. I said that uh, I, I kind of got a little, a little bit intimidated by the surroundings. I realized I was The Rock, one of the biggest stars in the world. And I looked out into the ring and I saw the Nature Boy out there and I saw Evolution and I said a prayer. And my prayer was, please God, don't let me suck. And I thought, well, that's, you know, that's, that's not really shooting for the stars. And so I felt an enormous amount of pressure in 2006 when I knew it was my final chance to have that moment because I really never had that great WrestleMania moment. And so for me, when I, when I, when I did deliver with Edge, it was like a giant weight off my shoulders. So it is, it's our Super Bowl. It's unlike anything uh, that I've ever been around. I love the fact that, that SummerSlam is coming so close, and for me, match for match, this, uh, this SummerSlam has a chance to rival WrestleMania. And I think the guys are gonna come through on an unbelievable level, but there was always this sense that uh, it was our Super Bowl. Ray, what about you? You've been in a lot of WrestleManias. What does WrestleMania mean to you as a performer, as an individual that got his opportunity to wrestle on this stage? What does it mean to you? Well, I remember watching my first WrestleMania uh, which was WrestleMania 3. And I was in Mexico City at the time. And uh, ever since that moment, uh, you know, I told myself, I would really love to be part of that stage one day. And you know, when that dream came true, it's just been nothing but excitement, uh, emotion. Uh, it's, it's really hard to explain that feeling that you get when you walk out and you feel the, like Daniel said, 80, 90,000 people uh, just that, that excitement, you know, to let it, um, let it sink in and enjoy the moment, you know. So it's, it's, been, it's been very emotional, uh, high roller coaster for me. Dolph, you've uh, kind of grown up in the WrestleMania era. What does WrestleMania mean to you? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, personally, y you do strive to make goals for yourself. When five years old, I wanted to be a WWE superstar. At 15, I wanted to go to college and break records so I could be a WWE superstar. And then I finally got a contract.
contract. And people say, oh, you made it. It's, you know, you made it WWE. I go, that's one of my goals. You, you want to become the best. You want to go on the biggest stage there is for the greatest wrestling company there is and not just steal the show. Make, have that feeling where you know the 70 or 80,000 people just made that moment for you legendary. And I have yet to have something along those lines, and, uh, but it's something that I strive for every single day and I'm really looking forward to it. You're posed for it. It's gonna happen, I promise you. My friend Happy Heyman, Paul Heyman. Paul, even though you're not a competitor yourself, uh, I know that you're a student, obviously we all know, you're a student of the game, you're a lifelong fan. Uh, what is your insight on the importance professionally of being involved in WrestleMania? It means you're accepted. It means you've made it. It's, it's getting your jersey hung up in Madison Square Garden. It's growing up as a kid and getting one at bat in Yankee Stadium. There is nothing else in this industry that compares to WrestleMania. Steve had a very famous saying that was probably even more famous behind the scenes that if you're in WWE and you're not striving to become the champion, you're in the wrong business. And I think today if you're in WWE and you don't obsess over getting to the main event of WrestleMania, you're in the wrong industry. The, the greatest moment I had as a color commentator was with JR, where we got to call Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock at WrestleMania 17. It was, there's nothing I've ever done as a commentator. No, it was in, uh, it was in, it was in Houston. Astrodome. It was, it was in the Astrodome, and, and it was, I mean. Sold out, brother. Nothing. Turn away, <laughs> couldn't get a ticket. Hanging from the rafters. Nothing as a commentator compared to it. I got to be a manager. Double juice with a strap. <laughs> Sorry. I, I got to be a manager for the first time this year at a WrestleMania. I got to walk out to the ring first with CM Punk against The Undertaker. And to this day, if you ask CM Punk, who I think stole the show at WrestleMania this year, was he satisfied, he will look you square in the eye and say, no, because I didn't main event and I will never be satisfied until I main event. When Brock came back, his selling point to me to come back was, Psst, we're gonna get to the main event of WrestleMania. It, there's a magic to this name. There is an aura to the name. It, 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 and it goes far beyond as a kid, Madison Square Garden or Yankee Stadium. And to, I would even suggest it goes now even beyond the championship itself. WrestleMania is the end all be all. It's the focal point and the centerpiece of our industry. And it's what everybody in this company looks at 364 days a year for that final day where you say, I'm here tonight at WrestleMania. The, uh, of course, the, uh, and, and, and 2K Sports covers this WrestleMania feeling, the emotion, the intangible, unlike anybody else has ever done. End of October, domestically, beginning in November, internationally, it's amazing. Steve, we've had a lot of interesting answers here tonight about what WrestleMania means to everyone. You got anything to say that you haven't talked about in your podcast or you ever heard tonight here today? Well, since you brought up the podcast, it is a Steve Austin show. You can catch it at podcast1.com and iTunes, Sports and Recreation Division. It's in the top five. Anyway, you know, it's interesting. You see all these cats up here that go down on different roads in their careers as a professional wrestler or as a sports entertainer as it is today. And, you know, you go through your fights, your struggles, your political struggles, all the BS that goes with it. And, uh, you know, the injuries, the sacrifices. And uh, it's, it's everybody's goal to be at the top of a card. And everybody knows on this stage that the higher you are on that card, the higher you get paid. And so, Rick, you know, you're a main eventer damn near your whole career. 
you always want to be on the top. Well, then at the end of the year, you got the biggest show of the year, and that's WrestleMania. You want to be on top of that son of a bitch. You want to main event it. And not everybody can be a main eventer uh, or main event in WrestleMania, but you want to be on that show. It is a big show. And when WrestleMania rolls around, it's time to put up or shut up, and that's the bottom line. You got to prove why you were on that card, wherever you were, much less the opening match or the main event, and that's the bottom line. It is a proven ground and a time to open up a can of entertainment whoop ass for that crowd and take them on a story, a journey, and let them feel and see and enjoy all the different levels of the story that you're giving them. And that's all I got to say about that. It's a blast. Well, the thing about it is that you can obviously see that everybody knows that all of us that have had the opportunity to participate in WrestleMania uh, feel how special it is. And that's why this video game presentation that uh, 2K Sports has captured is uh, so extraordinary. Uh, we're going to feature more than 45, 45 of the greatest WrestleMania matches in history. And uh, so the question would be, what contests or moments would you like to see included on this list for our panel? Be thinking about it. What moments, what matches would you like to see on that list for our longtime fans to either relive or our younger fans or younger consumers to experience for the first time? And that's the beauty of this video game. For the longtime fans and diehards and you know, who's seen it all, lived through it all, you're going to love reliving this because it's authentic. The ones that are new are going to love the history lesson. So, Steve, uh, you've been a student of the game. You are a student of the game. What matches would you want to see as a fan on this video game? Anything special that if you said, okay, I definitely want to see blank, match on from WrestleMania on this DVD. And you got 29 of them, 29 of them to, to choose from. Which one match would you like to see? Wait, kid, uh, before you say that, I know we all want to hear it. There's a, a gentleman here didn't get to talk about what WrestleMania meant to him. He's, 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 <laughs> he saved me for last. I don't know. <laughs> Just, I'm show us that. Nick, it's called Hot Tag. Oh, I'm sorry. I you let me book the match here? <laughs> <laughs> Work with us, Mick. He, he you know, there's a bunch of people out here. He, 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 he thought nervous. you were forget about okay, me. Okay, okay. So Mick screwed up my hot tag in my big moment <laughs> with his JR peripheral vision isn't the best I, in the I, world, I, but I surely felt, he sees Ric Flair over there. I He's felt, building I was this waiting. Thing, what I had was this? We're trying to build this last, thing up. Mick, oh, calm I, down. I, 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 you I, don't blew the hot tag. I felt Go in my heart. Go over some thumbtacks and don't interfere, okay? I, I felt, I felt like we had, we'd forgotten Rick, and I wanted we to make sure it didn't Mick. happen. Talk, right, well, we got the greatest bad. announcer in the history of the business running this show, and he's going to forget about Rick Blair. I'm trying to do the right thing, damn Relax, it. Relax, kid. <laughs> when Relax. we got Mick and those double knits out of those sweatpants, Something happened. Chicks in New York are paying top dollar for that stuff. Nate, considering Mick, God bless Michael Francis Foley. If you want, would you like? You you were a star before you ever debuted at WrestleMania. You were the Nature Boy. You came into WrestleMania eight. You think I'm not prepared? You think I just showed up, Mick, and sweats for the hell of it? What did I come to the, where, where's, that show, where's that show again tomorrow night? Come on, help me. The improv tickets are still available. Yeah, where did I get the, no, 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 the, I get the improv tomorrow night? I'm going to open up a comic can of whoop ass on you, <laughs> you at go. the improv tomorrow night. I was Chief trying Club. to give Rick the hot tag. Here. Nate. <laughs> You're not calling this match, You're Mick. not in the match. Do you not wow. understand that? I'm leaving the match. You're not calling this match. <laughs> All right, he'll be, he'll be back. He's got to go to the bathroom. He'll be back in a minute. Hey, Nate. Yes, sir. WrestleMania 8, you were there, right? Yep. You were already first ballot Hall of Famer. But at that point in your career, finally getting to that stage, what did it mean to you as nature? Because there was no bigger star on WrestleMania 8, in my opinion, than nature of Ric Flair, brother. Well, um... 
WrestleMania 8 was me and Savage, correct? I don't keep crap of the dates, right? Check. Uh, it Ask was, Foley, he knows yeah, everything. No, no, it was, um, <laughs> I had been um, working for the NWA and WCW for years, and uh, I just couldn't put up with it anymore. And, and I had talked to Vince 20 times, and 20 times I just felt loyal to the company and to the NWA. When you're the NWA champion, it, you assume a lot of responsibility. But I finally said, hell, in the words of Steve Austin, hell yeah, I'm coming. So I went up there and uh, man, I'm telling you, there's nothing like WrestleMania. I mean, I, I, guys, I wrestled in front of 200,000 people in North Korea. I've been in Japan 69 times, 69 times. Okay, no, there's no subliminal information on that 69. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying that there's nowhere I've ever been but the biggest moment of my career, after all the stuff I've done, was walking out that deal in Indianapolis um, and wrestling Savage. And uh, it was not, a, was not a good time because Randy and Elizabeth were not getting along, but we made music. And Kurt Henning, who was, God rest his soul, was with me. And uh, I want to say that we tore the joint down. It was great. And, uh, what I'm sad about is Randy's not here anymore, Kurt's not here anymore, Elizabeth's not here anymore. I'm the only one left in that match. Um, and I think about that all the time. My second, or actually my biggest match though, was against Shawn Michaels. Uh, uh, that's okay. We're gonna get to that. You know, my Shawn Michaels match when I retired, I got, I got inducted in the Hall of Fame and got retired the next day. And, it's uh, nice Shawn Michaels day from huh? the writer. That's the big finish. What's that? You're killing my finish here. Oh, I'm sorry. And then, of course, another big moment was... They know it's a work! <laughs> hey, hey. But I want to tell you, another big moment was when I signed with WWE in oh, 2001, I go, uh, I go to Vince, I said, what do you want me to do? He said, I just want you to come up here and walk and talk, right? Well, I wasn't there six weeks and he wanted to wrestle me, Real Rumble, right? I said, oh, that's nice. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm out, but I am not really prepared. I haven't worked out in a year, right? So then all of a sudden, Hunter walks up to me one day and says, uh, take her one shit WrestleMania in Toronto. And man, that was, that was something else. And I'll, I'll give you some information about one particular. You guys all know about that flip I do in the rope, right? Upside down on the thing, right? Well, I missed it the first time. And Undertaker looked at me and said, you ready to try it again, kid? <laughs> I said, God's on the truth. I said, hell yeah, man. Upside down, boom out, whack myself, and the rest was history. <laughs> but it's the truth, and there's nothing like WrestleMania. And the, what he's making reference to, it was me, Dave Batista, and Randy Orton, WrestleMania, uh, the 20th anniversary, yeah, yeah. against him and The Rock. Are you kidding? We stole it. Are you shit me? Nobody could follow that shit. You think Goldberg did it? I mean, give me a break. <laughs> Nobody could follow that match. Are you kidding me? The Rock was doing this shit. I was doing my shit. Mick was rolling on the thumbtacks. We stole it. <laughs> but, but as usual, we lost. <laughs> no, I, I, I ain't lost. won a match yet. As you realize usual, that? I, lo I, I lost. Yeah, yeah no. Lost. I'm teaching the Miz the figure four. And I said, Miz, I never beat anybody with that. Why do you want to learn to hold? In 40 years, nobody ever submitted it for you. Are you kidding me? I've had it on Austin 25 times. He just grabbed the rope. <laughs> anyway, I love you guys. I'm honored to be here. And there's nothing like WWE. And uh, I'm going to share a special moment, which I feel like everybody needs to know. Five months ago, my son died. And uh, when they were closing his casket, I took one of my Hall of Fame rings from my retirement, and I put it on his hand. And my oldest son was there at the time, when I, when before they closed the coffin. I took my one from the Four Horsemen and gave it to him. So I went to NXT about two months ago, and I walked in, and Hunter says, I need to talk to you. I figured I was in trouble already, and I don't, you know, like I was gonna go crazy in the show or something, right? And uh, the company gave me another one with my son's engraved name in it. And there's nothing like the WWE. I mean, I want no, I, no, I want to tell you, 
I want to tell you, the events are phenomenal, and they are. But working for these guys is like working for the best people in the world. They take care. They might be hard, but they don't ask anything of you that they won't do themselves. I'm talking about us as the performers. I mean, that's just the way it is. They're awesome people. And uh, I think that the combination of the game and these guys will be great. And I'm here, and uh, as you know, I'm staying all night, and I'm staying a little longer. <laughs> I'm dancing all night, and I'm dancing longer. I'm taking Steve Austin out because I'm doing his, his podcast tomorrow. If he doesn't come out, I ain't doing the podcast. I got leverage. <laughs> and by the way, his podcast with me for three hours, if we're drinking beer, will rock it right to number one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Good Lord. Love you guys. Thanks. And thank you for all the respect. WWE and this game were made for each other. Thank you so much. Hell, I'm going to the bar, Jim. Let's go. Well, that was, well, that was interesting. <laughs> it's the truth. It screwed my damn script up, they wrote. I got me. three Hall of Fame rings. All Nobody right. even knows it. We're talking about now the, uh, trying to get back on track here. That was great. That's the great thing about this event. Th these guys, they don't have a clue what I'm going to ask them. We don't do any rehearsals, we don't do any walkthroughs. This is organic and as real as it can get, which I think is a, actually a compliment to you guys because we want you to be entertained and feel real, and this is real. And Steve, oh Steve, any match in the first 29 WrestleMania? Any match, any match. Any of them? Any match, no. Nothing no, no specific matches. And they're, they're all great matches to yep. me. I yeah. think once you, you get there. You got a hell of a roster there, kid. Just yep. book a match, play the damn game, and have fun with it. I'm them. with you. They're all great matches. How about you, Mick? Um, Anything special you want on the, your wish list? Yes. So you're a Santa Claus loving, sleigh riding, <laughs> elf kissing, <laughs> mistletoe, belt buckle wearing, son of a gun. And somebody's uh, going to get the mistletoe belt buckle and, reference. And, and like by the way, point. he doesn't drink, and we don't trust anybody that doesn't drink. <laughs> Mick, what is your dream match on WrestleMania DVD or uh, the 2K video game? My, uh, I, you know, I'm, can I have three answers? Uh, my two favorite WrestleMania matches of all time are uh, Steamboat and Savage from WrestleMania 3, Stone Cold and Bret Hart. I believe it was... Uh, 13. 13, and then uh, up until 2006, my WrestleMania moment was when I got to come in for the last five minutes of Steve's match at The Rock in Philadelphia. And uh, I, I was a guest referee. I'd been injured during my match at the big show. I was able to make my way using what we refer to as intestinal fortitude. Made my way back into the ring, and I've been on the receiving end of some, some pretty good responses, but nothing like those two guys were receiving. And so on. I understood from a fan's perspective that I had the greatest spot in the world for one of the best matches I'd ever seen. It was just phenomenal. And then when Steve uh, he got the victory, he turned to me and said, thanks, kid. And that was my, uh, that was a great WrestleMania moment for me. So I'd like to see those three specific matches on the game. All good. All good choices. Dolph, what do you think? You're, you kind of, you grew up through a lot of these WrestleMania moments and matches that many of these men were involved in you were still a, a, a young fan yeah uh yeah and there's i i guess we got in trouble for doing the uh sean and rick kind of reference already <laughs> but no, uh no, go ahead do what you want say what you want to say i don't give a shit <laughs> in that case uh, no actually actually uh, i got to see in person out in the crowd um sean michaels versus the undertaker for the first time i forget which wrestlemania that was but atlanta Nice. Witnessing that in person, out in the crowd, with that crowd response, two of the greatest of all time, in the back, in the ring, two heroes of mine who are at the top of their game, who have proven already that how good they are. And to witness them put, like you said, with Rick, like a, a painting, a masterpiece of a story and real life story and drama mixed into that match. It was one of the most special things I've ever seen as a fan and as a performer. That's good, I agree. Good, good stuff. Paul, I, you mentioned uh, 
17, WrestleMania 17, I have to tell you, I never told you this in public, it's probably my, one of the greatest days of my career. And next year will be 40 years for me. I thought, for whatever reason, you brought out the best of me. And you pissed me off at the right time. You challenged me intellectually at the right time. You're a perfect antagonist. And I felt, looking back on that day in the Houston Astrodome, where they love you blue and Bum Phillips coach Earl Campbell, that uh, that was one of my, without sounding too egocentric, one of my finest moments. Stone Cold joining Satan himself to become the hated villain in his home state of Houston, Texas, was absolutely, I'll never forget that day. So thank you. Well, thank you. And uh, I'll let you know why that's so humbling. Um, I first got to be a color commentator in WCW because I kept on getting in trouble saying things on interviews I wasn't supposed to say. So, of course, why not give that person two hours of airtime on Saturday night? And they paired me up first with Lance Russell, who I, I loved. You know, I mean, I, I, I loved Lance from Memphis, and I, I just walked all over him because Lance would let me. And then they paired me up with Tony Schiavone, um, and I walked all over Tony Schiavone because that was who I was. I was Paulie Dangerously, and I was like, hey, if he can't keep up with me, screw him. And then they paired me up with JR, and, and JR just grabbed me by the wrist, and he says, uh, we're going to do really well here, or you're going to look really stupid. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, I just sat under the learning tree, and I learned to talk in sound bites, and I learned not to yell at all times on commentary, because that was, you know, especially back in the late 80s, that's, that's all I knew how to do, was just yell and give a lot of energy. And uh, I learned how to be a commentator from, when I taught Joey Styles how to be a commentator in ECW. All I did was tell him the things that JR taught me inside the little sound booth in WCW and on the live broadcast. So I, I, I assure you, sir, it is I who thank you for that night. Um, in terms of what matches I would like to see at WrestleMania, there are three that I personally fantasize about. One, from a historical perspective, is Ric Flair versus Hulk. Hogan. That match should have main evented a WrestleMania on any year for the simple fact that history deserves to categorize that match as a WrestleMania main event. And anybody that grew up in any era that looks back on the history of this industry, Flair versus Hogan should have been a WrestleMania main event. For Amen. For, for Sid, my... Sid Vicious, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Randy Savage, give me a break. <laughs> what, 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 what tech are you going to buy? Huh? Give me a break. I know. So, but you know, things changed and it all worked out good. And it is what it is. And I appreciate that comment. No, it's the truth. But we should have. Hogan, WWE, WWF, Flair, WWE, it was a natural. But it, it, was, it was the world's colliding. Um, it was the dream match for anybody. And the thing of it is, I'm so easy to beat. I haven't won a match ever. <laughs> so I would have just gone out there and taken the big leg. You know, Hogan just had seven back surgeries in the last year and a half, right? So I go to him, you never fell down in the ring from dropping a leg on everybody. True story. <laughs> he never fell down ever. With me, I don't, I don't think I ever gave him a flying mare. All nice. right. That's <laughs> I'd like to thank so, Greg um, Goose for sponsoring this portion of the broadcast. <laughs> um, um, oh, Jared, if I continue, there are two others. The truth. Um, <laughs> sound vibe, baby. Give me two. Give me for, two. Uh, for my own personal enjoyment as a fan, the match that I want to see main event, a WrestleMania, or as a gamer to see it in the game, would be Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk. I saw a series of matches last year on television right before Punk and I got a chance to work with each other 
and I never could take my eyes off the TV screen. I was mesmerized by what Daniel Bryan and CM Punk could do together, and in terms of the new style in this industry, those two have a chemistry that harkens back to Austin and The Rock, Flair versus Ricky Steamboat. It is just the premium match of our generation. The third match that I fantasize about is one that I will selfishly tell you I want to be a part of. It's the toughest SOB versus the baddest dude on the planet. I fantasized about it since I saw Brock Lesnar not t choke out Shane Carwin and looked over to my left and saw Steve Austin standing there. Can you imagine the box office appeal of Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Brock Lesnar? I'm buying a ticket for it, baby. Retail? Hell yeah. Uh, Paul, we need another syllable in there when you say Brock's name. Come on, give it to us a little better than that. <laughs> the uh... Rock <laughs> Lesnar. As you guys can see here, I'm fast forwarding because we have 15 minutes left. Oh my God. So we're going to Ixna question A. Sound bites, guys. Sound bites. Sound bites would be very much appreciated at this point. We want to thank again Grey Goose for sponsoring this portion of the interview. Uh, the I'm just looking through your, some of these questions that are relevant. There are a lot of them that are relevant, and a lot of them that I'd like to know myself. Uh, what is your? I'll ask. Start with Rick. Rick, would you be? Could you, could you be convinced to wrestle at WrestleMania 30? And if so, who would you love to wrestle with? WrestleMania 30, you're talking about in April of this year? April 2014, New Orleans Superdome. In New Orleans? If you could have a match. Give me the word, brother. I'll get myself ready. And brother, I can still do it. Don't think I can. I got no aches and pains, okay. man. Consider I need some incentive. Who do I want to wrestle? Yeah. The, only, the only person, I tell us all the time, that I've never wrestled in this business of any notoriety is Cena. He's afraid of me. He said, I, I, I saw him go there, I said, let's go drink tonight. He said, I'm hiding out my bus. Cena, you know, the first drink Cena ever had with me, we're in Sherwood Forest in England, and he just won a world championship, and I go... Robin yeah. Hood and uh, Maid Marian <laughs> yeah. had just yeah. gone to the yeah. room. Yeah. No, I missed my plane. Not lying, I missed my plane home. But I go to I go, I go to uh, I go to CNN. I said you're the world champion. You gotta buy drinks, you know. He said I don't drink. I said good luck with that shit. <laughs> and, and, and now and now John Cena, in a five-hour road trip, he'll drink 30 beers. I don't get it. He's the, he has a genetic gift. He never gains a pound. He doesn't do cardio. Tell me, okay? So, but anyway, Cena is fun. But I need to wrestle John Cena. I hear you. All right, yeah, Mitch. Or, or I want to wrestle Stone Cold. Stone's Gold ain't going to hurt his neck with me. I don't even fly him air. I'm wrestling you tomorrow in a hotel room doing <laughs> <my> podcast. <laughs> the podcast. The podcast. Mick, how about you? I know that, that people ask all the time, would you ever be interested in wrestling again at WrestleMania? If the answer is yes, who would be your ideal opponent? Uh, uh, I, uh, unfortunately, I can, never, I can never wrestle again. So um, the, I used to be asked all the time, uh, who I wished I could have wrestled, and the answer is always the same as going back three years, uh, about 10 years ago, I'd say, Ric Flair, Bruiser Brody, Hulk Hogan. And Rick and I had not only a few matches, we had a, a classic. We stole it, uh, brother. We, we stole, we stole it, it twice. Times. We stole <laughs> it at SummerSlam for WWE, and we stole it for that company, whatever it's called, TNA. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Mick said, uh, Mick said to me. That won't make the edit, by no, the way. Hey, hey, no, I, I don't care. Hey, 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 hey. Yo, you know what he said to me? Uh, we're, at, we're in, uh, he said, well, cause I kept, we were fighting like hell outside the ring. And he said, we're in, uh, we've gone dark, right? Yeah, what do you yeah, call it? Yeah. Commercial time? I, and I, I said. Much I, like I, we're getting I, ready to do here. Hey, no, tell the story. No, tell the story. He said, who works through, <laughs> through, through the dark time? I said, 
Man, when you get me going, I don't stop. He didn't. I, I was counting on about a three-minute rest, which I badly needed, and Rick beat the hell out of me the entire <laughs> commercial break. I, 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 I got all the heat and I'm off the air. <laughs> the, uh, the mint lights came on. He made a comeback on me. Uh, honestly, <laughs> people were, you know, they, they praised that match so highly, and I knew it had been good. But it wasn't until I watched back, and this, you know, you talk about, you know, moves and 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 different high spots, but you can't you can't plan on intensity, uh. and so that's something. Well, that, he uh, let me, he lets me smack him around. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. The four or five guys in this business. Like him, he. I mean, I got one offensive weapon, guys. I don't drop kick. I don't do playing his. I got chop. He lets me smack him. He lets me smack him. Undertaker, just relatively a few, you know. Hey, Bret Hart, do we have to do that? Ah, sorry, Bret. Yeah, it's only two like us. The San Antonio one night, Bret Hart goes, "It's a dark match. Please don't chop me." I said, "Okay, okay, hello." All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay now. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get me going. Anybody will let me hit him know this grill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> time to go to Kill the great me. goose. Kill Are you looking at time for this one? Kill me. All right, how about we? Flair. No. no, 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 no <laughs> yes. Hey, okay. Ask me more. Flair, I'm a wealth of entertainment. Daniel. I Daniel Bryan. Save my ass. <laughs> Soundbite. If you could pick out any WrestleMania opponent, who would it be? Daniel Bryan. Who's your dream opponent at WrestleMania? I, I honestly feel like I don't belong up here. <laughs> Hey, 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 Daniel, Daniel, hey, Daniel, Daniel, what the hell? 41 years, you can only imagine, hey, 41 years of wrestling Brody and Blackjack, you can imagine how I feel about you being up here. <laughs> Good Lord. Jeez. Do you have Great. an answer to the question? What would Harley have said about him? One tackle drop down, come off low, buddy. Don't let your beard hit the ground. <laughs> Good Lord. I'll move. <laughs> I'll move. I'll move. Yeah, here's, here's the greatest. Kurt Henning goes, you got to hear the story. So, <laughs> I got to tell this story. It's the greatest. So, Kurt, it's, no, so, no, it's, yeah, so, no, 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 I'll do Kurt. So, Kurt Henning's new in the business, right? And we're in Kansas City, right? And I'm the champion, right? And uh, he's working with Harley, right? And uh, I'm doing Kurt now. Hey, Mr. Reese. <laughs> What do you want to do for a finish? <laughs> Harley goes, What's your finish, kid? Kurt, uh, drop your coffee top rope. I'll, I'll move. move. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I'll move. Kurt goes, Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll move. <laughs> I've lost control of my truck. My train is running away aimlessly, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I can tell stories all night long. I know you can. I said a little longer. Bring me a beverage. Dance all night, dance a little longer. Right? 103 hours with Steve tomorrow. You guys, when you hear this story with me and him tomorrow, you'll have a number one rated podcast. Not iPads. Well, probably both be far from having to be. It's okay. Podcast. Okay. Podcast. Baby. Podcast. Okay. Boy, there you Sorry, go. remember, I can't it's work a new my, deal. It's a I can't work my cell phone, much less podcast. Stone Cold okay? Steve Austin Podcast. Podcast. Must need listen to her boy. And Stone Cold, three hours over here in my room. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Woo! And Steve's bringing three cases of beer. What the hell? I came looking for a couple of plugs for the show, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> no, I, I think we're turning your podcast <laughs> heel. Hey, we're, hey, we're going to plug that baby all night long. Wait till I get to the bar tonight. I didn't start it yet. We're having a... Uh, <laughs> you can see that we enjoy each other's company. You can also see this wasn't rehearsed. Hardly. This was real. This is reality television at its best. I've lost complete control of my job. I'm sure I will never be asked back. And this has probably destroyed and what career way, I had left. And by the way, I introduced Jim Ross to his wife. We go way back. Charleston, West Virginia. 
We were so drunk, we were all on <laughs> we, get, we, we get on the airplane. <laughs> hey, no, hey, Charles and West Virginia are all, all night. We, 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 we get on the airplane, and I think the chick is hitting on me. She's hitting on him, right? Then she tells this joke, and they're out of food, so Jim and I drink Bloody Mary's for an hour and a half back to Atlanta. His wife is absolutely dropped dead gorgeous, but I mean, she needs lens grafters, right? Let's, let's go with it, right? <laughs> just, let's get that figured out. Ric Flair in my prime, or him? Are you shitting me? Uh, I was wrecked. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, I, I just know. saw her today. She's the greatest. <laughs> I go, I go, how did that possibly happen? 22 years ago, Jim Ross, Nature Boy. I must have looked rough that morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think Jim Ross and I haven't tipped a few back over the years. Just to survive. We used to walk into the bar and go, oh, do we really work for WCW? Let's have two martinis, good Lord. The only guy that drank more booze with me after WCW was Gene Oakland. And Gene, Gene's had three kidney transplants. <laughs> hey, who can work for WCW and not drink? You give me a break. Good Lord. Oh my God! <laughs> All right, well, uh, <laughs> Jar, yeah. let's go get a crown. Let's go. Well, we're almost done. Hey, anybody? <laughs> anybody got? We got like five minutes. I need short answers. So that means Rick, you can I'll, lay out here. I'll tell a story. No, you can lay out. Lay out. <laughs> I got a five-minute story. Consider you on the apron, and you're not been tagged in I'm yet. I'm not. I'm, I don't do good on the apron. We got that. <laughs> so, I was any to final wrestler. thoughts on this game brings every great superstar together in WrestleMania, in the arena, in their attire, with the correct sound, the correct feel, the ability to make matches. Hey, if everybody's jonesing on seeing Stone Cold and Goldberg or Steve Austin and, and Hulk Hogan, this, your, this is your spot. If you want to see Ric Flair uh, take on John Cena, as Rick would, has indicated that he'd like to book himself on for uh, April in New Orleans, then th you can do that here. Hey, can, I, can, I, can I have to break in for a minute? The oh, one boy, thing that's cool is... Well, uh, what the hell? Why not? No, because the guys will like this, right? At my age, I'm still I'm ready to go. But I have a cosmetic issue, right? And I look like shit, okay? So... <laughs> With the game, they actually make it look like I have muscles. So I'm going to look like I have muscles. You, you actually have a muscle. Too, yeah. You know, like that's that. not true. You, you know, you know Arn Anderson calls you the human jellyfish. Those, <laughs> yeah, they actually knobs, make it look like knobs. we have muscles. Oh, yeah, that's knobs, I'm sorry. Knobs of the human jellyfish. <laughs> this makes the television show. Can you imagine what the internet and the dirt sheets are going to say about this shit? Yeah, I love it. Twitter is going crazy right now. Yeah. Flair just Hell said, yeah. hashtag SummerSlam. <laughs> yeah. Well, Good gen Lord. gentlemen. Uh, Can you imagine we're going to be in New Orleans for WrestleMania? That's a story in itself. Well, I'll, be, I'll, be a, I'll be with Stone Cold with Pat O'Brien at 12 noon. Some of us will be at <laughs> New Orleans. I'm not sure all of us are going to make it. <laughs> well, if it's up to my ex-wife, I for sure won't. <laughs> Good Lord. Considered I've lost Nobody all... Nobody get married out here, please. <laughs> it's overrated. If you're even entertaining the thought of your partner being with tonight, and you're thinking about getting married, throw it out. <laughs> it's overrated. And don't live with her long as the statute of limitations, okay? You got to pay her anyway. Thank you, Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the key word there for Nate's is prenup. Yeah. Oh, I had a prenup. Didn't matter. Oh, Jesus Christ, I started that story. <laughs> you kidding? I paid 25 grand for a prenup, and she tore it up, and the lawyer that drew it up retired. <laughs> Don't get me on a prenup. Okay, the, here's the deal. At the end of the day, end of the day. There ain't nothing to prenup about anymore. <laughs> we've had a great time. We have, this is an amazing project that many of us have worked on for months and months. 
the folks at 2K Sports have invested their heart and soul in this game, along with all the WWE resources. It's amazing the attention to detail that we have in this game. <laughs> After this, the, uh, this train wreck is over, <laughs> and we are able to get the ambulances here for the bodies, the casualties, we are going to do one-on-one -on -one interviews. We are going to, God forbid, have more beverages and great food. So on behalf of all these amazingly talented gentlemen that are on the stage, which I feel humble to be a part of, and all the great folks at 2K Sports and WWE, we thank you sincerely, quite frankly, for being here. It's been a hell of a ride, you gotta admit. And hell yeah. we will talk to you in a few moments. Enjoy the food, have a beverage, and we'll talk to you just in a few moments. Thank you all for coming and buy the game. It's awesome. Woo woo! superstars stepped up to challenge our throne and if you pre-order WWE 2K14 you can engage the battle as the ultimate warrior <laughs> that power this intensity your belief our destiny all of it together created the one and only ultimate warrior all of us the freaks we did in our time what will live forever. <laughs> Hold this, boss. Pre-order WWE 2K14 today and battle as the one and only Ultimate Warrior. Become immortal. WWE 2K14. Pre-order now.